Good day, YouTube. It's Brett here from Overtime Gaming with you once again, and welcome back with some more FIFA 13 connected career mode. And of course, guys, we're back with Newcastle United, the Black and White Army, the Toon Army, the Mighty Magpies. It's Premier League action today, guys. We're away from home at, the Mo at Molyneux um, against Wolves. Of course, Wolves newly promoted into the Premier League this season on this series. But of course, we all know in real life have just been relegated from the Championship into League One. So dreadful, dreadful couple of years for real life Wolves, but a great bounce back season for Wolves in this series. We look at the table here. You can see where they're sitting in fourth, joint on points with Spurs, but only a point ahead of United. So a loss here or not maximum points could definitely drop us below both of them. We look at the Wolves side there. You can see Sacco, a guy that we're really interested in, sitting on the bench. So if that's a sign, if that's how he's been playing, if that's where he's playing for Wolves all season now, we could definitely be in with a shot of signing in in January. But he's not one of our main main targets, to be fair. Isamat Marin is getting a start of centre defence today, guys. We're just trying to get him some ga big game experience and give Sacco a bit of a rest as well. But Cali's playing instead of Korsha. Korsha needed a bit of a rest as well after he's been playing week in, week out, covering for the injured Debushi. But we're definitely looking for a win here, guys. It's not a, exactly a strong wall side at all. I would say it's a very weak wall side, actually, when we look at it. And they should definitely be one of the favourites to get relegated this year. So they're definitely a team we should be looking to beat. Now, let's talk about how the real world of football is going right now. Last Yesterday was the uh, European Under-21s um, Group B final matchups. So it was Russia versus Germany and Spain versus Holland. Uh, Spain and Holland have both already booked themselves a place into the knockout stages. Um, so we're just battling for top spot. Many people picked it as a um, Dutch win or a, um, a draw. There wasn't too many people say it or a close win for um, Spain. But nobody was really saying that anyone would really dominate. It would be a very close game. But Spain came out and it was basically Spain's second team of under-21s, I must say. It was nowhere near their full-strength side. Um, but they came out and completely dominated and won 3-0 against Holland. It was just incredible. And it just shows how good of a place Spanish football is in now. Of course, we all know how good their first team is. But when you've got players like Montoya and Carvajal that can back you up at right-back, you've got Menezi, um Mark Beitra, Ingo Fernandez at centre back. You've got Isco, Munayin. You've got Christian Tello. You've got Thiago, all in centre midfield. You've got Kamako. And then you've got Morata, who has looked absolutely incredible up front. His first time playing for the under 21s. He's only played three games now, he scored three goals. He's an absolutely incredible talent um, from Real Madrid there. Comparing him to Higuain, which is one of the reasons why they're free to get rid of Higuain. Because he is pretty much exactly the same player. And he is just incredible. And you've got him up front. Alongside Rodrigo. They are just so good. It is insane. And they're going to be a dominant force. And Loris makes the poor goalkeeping mistake. He came rushing out for that one. I have no idea why. I wasn't even holding down the Y button. But he comes out for that one. And just completely mistimes his jump. And it's just an awful, awful attempt at the save. Nice header from Hamilton. Good ball over the top to be fair. Right into the spot where it's awkward for the goalkeeper and the defender. But he should have done so much better for that. He would have been better standing on his line and letting him go for that ball on his own. And then making a save on the shot. So we're down 1-0 in the 23rd minute here, guys. We're going to try and bounce back extremely quickly. You can see we're making a breakdown here. Sissoko has been playing a lot better for us the last few games. But he couldn't beat the last man there. It's just a poor, poor run, to be fair. Basil saying Germany were trying to get their first points in the group as well, like England the other day. Germany were actually successful and ended up beating Russia 2-1. Germany's a strong side as well. They'd be far stronger if they had the likes of Gundogan, Goethe, to Sturgen. Um, lovely finish by Loic Remy there. Sneaks it underneath the goalkeeper's um, outstretched arms. Lucky goal, to be fair, I must say. The goalkeeper should have done far better with that. But that's what you get when you don't have a world-class keeper in the back of the net. Um, you see it there, definitely should have done better with it, but hey, we're not going to argue with it. 29 minutes in, they only led for 6 minutes, <clears throat> and it's all of a sudden tied up once again, guys. Good, good comeback, and hopefully we can now push on and pick up the win. But as I was saying, they ended up winning 2-1. Would be a stronger side if they had all their top internationals. But hey, 
what are they going to do? They still came with a strong side and probably were wishing for more, but just got outclassed by both Spain and Holland. Um, but one thing German football has been affected today, guys. Andre Schürrler has been confirmed as the new Chelsea player. He um, has been signed by Bayer Leverkusen because Bayer Leverkusen went out and signed a replacement striker, which is Hung Min Son. Um, I have no idea who the hell he is. I have never heard of him, I must say. Um, he's a South Korean striker from Hamburg, but I have never, ever heard of him. Um, if you have any idea if he's any good or you know who he is, leave him in the con comment section below so I at least have an idea who the fuck he is. Um, but Schürrle has been confirmed as a Chelsea player now, guys. It did look like it was collapsing when Jose Mourinho wouldn't let Kevin De Bruyne um, go on loan to by Leverkusen because he has, an, has him in his plans at Chelsea. Can't blame him. He's a really, really good talent. And I wouldn't say he's any worse than Schürrle, to be fair. Schürrle's good thing is he can play all over the pitch. He can play pretty much any position other than defence. Incredible player. Um, we've seen him play at striker. An awful defending again. How did we let Ebanks Blake get the header there? Piss poor defending by whoever the centre-back there was. I couldn't see if it was Yanger and Biwa or Mirin. Um, Loris really had no chance. He'd come out slightly as well. So an awkward dive there you see by Loris. And we're going into half time by the looks of it. 2-1 down. It's just a poor, poor first half by our standards, I must say. But as I was saying, Schell is a really talented player. And he's really going to um, strengthen the Chelsea squad, which is already incredible. My favourites to win the league. Obviously, I've already said that. Let me know who your favourites to win the league are, guys. Before we go on about that... I will speak about Tottenham quickly. Of course, AVB has now been placed as the bookies' favourites to be the new PSG boss. Now, this could be huge for Gareth Bale. And that's because AVB is one of the only reasons that Bale is staying at Tottenham at the moment. Of course, Madrid are waiting for um, a new manager to step in there before they go after Bale, but have said they really want him. Now... Real Madrid are the favourites, and I've, I think that's probably where he'll end up. But if AVB goes to PSG, I can definitely see PSG putting in a bid for Bale as well. Because they want another player of Bale's standard to go with Ibrahimovic. They have the money to buy him. Um, completely have the money to buy him. They'll probably send someone like Jeremy Menez or Gamero or something back to Tottenham, which wouldn't be a bad deal for Tottenham. Um, and a shitload of money, obviously. And of course... AVB's influence at PSG would be huge. So, I think that's another option. What do you think about AVB going to um, PSG as the manager? And do you think he'll have any consequences with Bale? Um, let me know in the comment section below, guys. And you can see an outstanding finish there by Ebanks Blake. A nice cross. Poor defending again. We left him open. Loris really had no chance on that one. I'm not blaming any of that on Loris. And it's a gorgeous finish. All of a sudden, we're 3-1 down at the Molyneux. This is just a piss poor performance. Awful, awful performance by our guys now. I have no idea why. But hey, at least it's happening now rather than a uh, run at the start of the season. It's happening now. We're getting into the set December now. I think I'm only a couple of games off December. and um, Which means we are near the transfer window, guys. So we can spark new life into the club in the next few, uh, in the next few weeks. So it's not too big of an issue. As long as this doesn't continue and we have a, a game of a uh, series of five games or so performing like this, we definitely need to bounce back after this result. If we don't pull it off here, we still might come back into this game, but we definitely need to bounce back in the next game with a nice win. So um, this is really affecting our standing in the table as well. I'm presuming if we lose this, um, both Tottenham and Man United will win, and which means we'll drop three points behind Tottenham, two points behind United. And it uh, just drops us out of a Champions League spot, which isn't great, I must say. We're definitely aiming for Champions League spot. Looking for a fourth or third finish. Hopefully we can do. Um, we've performed well this season, to be fair. Um, knocked out of the League Cup by Man United, obviously. And then went ba back to Old Trafford and beat them in the league. So, decent performance in the League Cup. Um, good performance in the league so far. We haven't played an FA Cup game yet. We'll start that soon. Um, in a couple of weeks, I believe. Um, nice performance so far in the Europa League. We've um, pretty much secured our group now. It's just us and RB Salzburg. And we have RB Salzburg left to play. So, um, hopefully we'll be looking to win the Europa League again, guys. Um, have a good performance in the FA Cup and finish in your um, Champions League spot for the Premier League. That's my aims. What do you think the possibilities are for the Newcastle club? Where do you think we're going to finish? That is an awful goal. And we're down 4-1, guys. Ebanks Blake completes his hat-trick. 
I have no idea how this goes in the back of the net. Look at this. It's an awful, awful strike on the ball. And it just rolls into the back of the net. I presume Loris didn't see it um, until late. Now, one thing I will say, I presume there's a lot of you thinking that Loris isn't performing as well as Ruffier did for us last year. So the deal's kind of backfired on us. But the thing is, Loris has won the Player of the Month award in the Premier League two months in a row now. He's been incredible for us. Saves like that are just fantastic. Now, the thing is with Loris compared to Ruffier, Loris is a traditional style goalkeeper. Ruffier is an acrobatic style goalkeeper. So Ruffier looks like he's making the more spectacular saves. Um, because of his acrobatic style. Whereas Loris makes them look easier. Because he just does them naturally. They're easier to him. So he doesn't look like he's spectacular. Whereas he's actually making exactly exactly the same saves as um, Ruffier would. But Ruffier just makes them look better. Um, makes them look more outstanding. Poses for the camera basically. So I just thought I'd let you know about that. Now one thing I do want to speak about quickly. Before this video ends. I know we've only got a couple of minutes. Um... Actually, no, I'll speak about it in the next video. I'll ask for your comments now. Um, I don't know if you've all heard about the Papis Dembasise thing with Newcastle. Newcastle's new sponsor is, actually, is obviously Wonga. And he's a practicing Muslim, so he's refusing to wear Wonga on the front of his shirt. Even though he um, wore Virgin money this, this year. But hey, that's just him. Um, and the PFA have come out and backed him saying he doesn't have to wear it if he doesn't want to. What do you think Newcastle should do about this? How do you think the league should react to this? Let me know in the comment section below, guys. Um, I'll speak about it properly in the video tomorrow. I hope you've all enjoyed the, this video, guys. And poor, poor result, I must say. You can see we're going into the next game. We have dropped below United, Spurs and Everton now. So it's a poor, poor result for us. Luckily, Spurs didn't pick up a win. And we've actually got them in the next game. So hopefully we can pick up a nice win against Spurs in the next video, guys. Put us above them in the table and allow us to catch up with United and Everton again. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment, like and subscribe for me, guys. Remember to share the video for me as well. And peace out, YouTube. We're heading into overtime.